Hey guys, it's Spiros from The Self-Help Photographer. How's it going this week? We've got a lot to cover, so we're going to jump right into it. I want to start with a little bit of news. Canon has got some weird stuff going on. I don't know exactly what they're doing. We've got an announcement coming March 22nd. I have no idea what they're announcing, except that it has to do with the PowerShot line based on the invite that they sent out to the press. There also are rumors of the EOS 100D, which sounds like it's going to be a super tiny SLR. My guess is that's designed to compete with the mirrorless market, but they've already got their EOS M camera, which they crippled with features, and most people say it's a bad camera not worth buying. So Canon is doing some weird stuff. I kind of think they're throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Regardless, I know they've got to step up to the plate and release some awesome cameras because Nikon has been handing it to them. Our question this week comes from Loai, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly. He wants to know if the D800 is worth the additional $1,700 that it costs to get that camera compared to the D7100. The short answer is yes, it's a full frame, awesome camera. The D800 is a great camera. However, Loai, it may not be the right camera for you. And this advice goes for everybody, okay? You can spend a lot of money on the camera body, but you have to account for the lenses. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The lenses are super important. If you have an awesome camera body and you put crappy lenses on it, you're gonna get crappy photos, okay? So the D7000, I keep telling people that's a great camera. It is, and you can save money by buying that body for 900 bucks. And then you can take the money that you would spend on a D7100, a D600, or even a D800, and you can get some good lenses. $1,700 will buy you good lenses. It can buy you a bunch of prime lenses. It can buy you one or two really good zoom lenses. Budget for your camera body and get exactly what you need and use all your extra money to get good lenses. That is my best camera buying advice. Today we're going to do something that we haven't done in a while, which is look at a couple of photos that have been submitted for the Composition Review. And we've got two photos today. Before we jump in though, I want to explain the Composition Review is different from a critique. Critiques look at the photo and say, this is good, this is bad, and they tear them apart in the interest of making the photographer better. And that approach is fine. I don't think that's a bad approach, but I think this different approach is also helpful. What I'm going to do is look at the photo and talk about the compositional elements and how I react to the photo. Our first photo is right here. This is from Rick Colby. And I want to start by saying this is a lovely shot. It's a beautiful architectural shot. And the exposure is fantastic. Spot on, beautiful blue sky, nice detail in the building, nice detail in the foreground, in the shadow areas, everything. The first sense I get from this image, the first feeling I get when I look at it, is openness. Even though you've got this great big building in there, that great big open sky gives a feeling of freedom, of emptiness, of being out in the open, and I really, really like that. I love the angle he approached this building on, and I love that when you shot this photo, Rick, that you didn't expose for the shadows on the side of the building. Now there is good detail in those shadows there, but if you had done that, the sky would have been super blown out and would have upset your exposure, and it would have ruined the bit of conflict and drama that I see in the photo because the shadow sides of the building draw attention because you want to know what's in there, you want to see what's in there, which gives a sense of mystery to the photo. Now, I really, really, really love the tree on the left-hand side and how that balances the openness and the freedom in the sky on the right-hand side. The line of that, I'm assuming it's a driveway, moving up through the photo and then around to the building is a great lead-in. And I like that that soft swoop of clouds in the sky mirrors that same shape. Now, I don't know if that particular bit was intentional or if that was a little bit of serendipity. Either way, it works really well. The rich, vibrant colors in the sky also contrast beautifully with the not dull, but muted tones in the bricks and the roof of the building, the stones in the building. The angle is great too because it's easy to approach a building straight on and shoot that and then you get that converging lines towards the sky because 
that's just what happens with the view. But with the angle that Rick shot this at, that we're looking, the converging lines work for him in the photo. He's using them to his advantage. And you've got those roof lines all pointing up into the sky, which moves me into that little cloud swoop, which loops me around and brings me back down to that tree. And that tree moves me down into the driveway line, which moves me back up into the building. So there's a really nice loop to follow in this image. Overall, I really, really like it. It's a beautiful image. Lovely architectural shot. I like the detail. The exposure is great. Uh, really good job on this one, Rick. I really enjoyed the fact that you sent it to me, and uh, great job on it. Our next image comes from Jose Martinez, and you're seeing it right here. And we've got a bit of an action shot. Now, it's not an action shot in the sense that you've caught the fast, fast, super fast action, but we've got, we've got action, we've got motion imminent in this shot. Again, I want to start off by saying that the, the exposure of the shot is really fantastic. It's really beautiful. Nice, good depth of color in the green. Nice exposure in the background. I love how the sun is illuminating the gentleman in this photo on the front and showing the detail in his face and the shirt and everything else. The brightest area of the photo draws attention. And because the, the face of the person in this photo is just about the brightest area. It holds attention. There is a bright area in the background you see here, but we are drawn to faces. So the combination of a face and the brightness of that face compared to the rest of the shot is enough to draw attention there, which I really, really like. The back arm and the impending motion of moving the ball forward is really nice, and it complements the gaze moving into the shot. Those are very, very strong lines. What uh, I feel like is maybe missing a little bit is something on the right hand side of the frame where the ball is going but I don't think it ruins the shot because that is a mystery you don't know who's waiting for the ball you don't know what other action might be going on this is a great single sort of frame and it looks like a practice as opposed to a game because of the clothes that he's wearing. So I'm just, the feeling I get overall is just being out there and having a good time, playing a game that you love. The depth of field in the shot is really nice because it, it takes the background and it gives us the context. We're in some kind of a city, we're playing this game, but it doesn't overwhelm the shots. The, the way the, the, the person is posed on the ground creates a nice interesting shape, which also makes things more interesting because, you know, it's not, in sports, it's not a pose in particular you'd think you would see, but here he is, you know, making this motion about to throw this ball. Something clearly is about to happen. I really like this shot. I like the placement of the subject. The rule of thirds was used really nicely here. Um, you know, it, it's it, great job with it, Jose. Thank you very much for sending it. Um, makes me feel good to look at the shot. Makes me want to go out and play some sports and uh, get involved in something, soccer, football, whatever it might be. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week, except for this announcement, which is that I'm creating a hub for your questions over at my website. Link in the description below. It's selfhelpphotographer.com slash submit. Right now, some of the questions are slipping through the cracks because Facebook doesn't always deliver me a message, or sometimes YouTube withholds a comment because it thinks it's spam, or my email filter sends it into spam as well. I'm trying to get all those questions out, but I don't want to miss your question. So if you want me to use it in the video, or you want to make sure I get it 100%, go to selfhelpphotographer.com slash submit and send me your question there. Now. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, and the most important thing, get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see you guys next week. My beard! What happened?